Now, to tell you the truth, I'm sort of burnt out on talking about it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just a job, really, you know, something to keep me moving. My real passion is my hobby. Really? What's that? I work with retards. Isn't that a little politically, um, incorrect? Oh, the hell with that. No one's gonna tell me who I can and can't work with, right? No, I mean... We got this one kid. Leslie Headland. He's got a forehead like a drive-in movie theater, but he's a good shit. So we don't bust his chops too much. The sixth episode of The Acolyte is out. Wait, how many episodes of The Acolyte are there gonna be? Eight? Ah, oh, for crying out loud. Honestly, I really hate it when storytelling is inefficient and dragged out. It's why I completely stopped watching network TV shows. Who the hell wants to sit through a 24 episode season anymore? With filler episodes, no less. But how could The Acolyte have been better off? Should it have been a movie? And where does the disaster go from here? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney's Star Wars. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow, and it's totally free. Another week, another Acolyte disaster. After a somewhat action-packed fifth episode, the series returns to its boring, nonsensical plotline, which in this episode means that we are treated to Leslie Headland's rendition of the Parent Trap in space with lightsabers, but no lightsaber battles. Also, how in the hell is a trained Sith Lord and a Jedi Master that can't tell the difference between their pupils, female Rick James 1 and 2, is beyond retarded. I guess that's what happens when you change what the Force is. Throughout the episode, the only character that has any inkling as to the true identity of parent-trapped female Rick James 2 is Discount Angry Badger. His helmet is made of kurtosis? Jeez, way to throw in a random-ass statistical term. The writing on this show isn't just terrible. It shows just how dumb and uninformed the writers are. They don't have the originality and creativity to come up with new words in the way that J.R.R. Tolkien, Frank Herbert, and even George Lucas had. And these writers feel the intense need to rework long-established lore. Case in point, the lightsaber lasso that Leslie Headland's talentless wife uses in this episode. But all in all, this episode just went back to the normal, boring, nonsensical plotline of the first four episodes. That's all it was. So yeah, I really don't know what was going on in Leslie Hendlid's massive head. But as I mentioned earlier, all this could have easily been done and taken care of in far fewer episodes, making the show more efficient. You know, I bet if they just condensed this shit into one two-hour movie and released it in theaters, they could possibly have generated profits. Let's go over the math. I mean, if this trash heap cost $180 million to make, I'm guessing Disney has enough normie apologists to fill some theater seats. I mean, it won't make a billion dollars, but I could see an Acolyte movie raking in three or maybe 400 million would be just about breaking even. Instead, it was released on a failing streaming network that people aren't even subscribing to for 99 cents a month. Brilliant business strategy. What's even funnier is that they are still barreling ahead with that godforsaken Ray movie. And the icing on the cake is that it'll be releasing the same day as Dune Messiah. Yeah, you heard that right. Warner Brothers and David Zaslav just fired the shot heard round the world. Homie just does not give one solitary fuck. For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the Old Republic. Before the dark times. Before the Empire. Go yourself. Hey, Bob. Dune Part 2 absolutely destroyed every single aspect of Disney's iteration of the Star Wars franchise in every conceivable way. As many others have noted, Dune was basically Star Wars for grown-ups. You know, a well-written narrative with mature adults as characters and all the visual spectacle we've come to expect. And Dune Part 2 was a teachable moment. Disney could have said, okay, wait, we have to pay attention here to this well-crafted film, but they didn't because they're Disney and they are held to BlackRock's insane DEI and ESG standards, so they have to focus on identity politics, 
by hiring completely inept people such as Amanda Stenberg and Leslie Max Headroom Headland. If Disney behaved like a mature business, they would hire the best possible people, regardless of their race. Instead, they chose to do diversity hiring for ESG brownie points and ended up with flop after monstrous flop, just like the Acolyte. Now, just to be clear, I don't think Leslie Headland was a diversity hire here. I mean, yeah, an obese lesbian woman checks three boxes. But no, as I mentioned in a few of my prior videos on this, here's what happened. What? <laughs> you gotta answer this, you got it. How do you think Leslie Headland got the green light for the Acolyte? Oh, you, you gotta give him that hook too and spit on that thing, you get me? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Leslie Headland was given that $180 million as a hush money payment because as Harvey Weinstein's assistant, she knows where all the bodies are buried and Disney's connection to the human trafficking operation they were conducting with dear old Harvey. Wow, I mean, no wonder they didn't want to release Sound of Freedom and shelved it for five years. Hit a little too close to home, huh? The cesspool of corruption at Disney completely dwarfs and puts to shame that of the Edison, New Jersey Police Department's running of a whorehouse back in the 90s. So the problem will continue until everyone, including Bob Iger, is fired from Disney and some adults with actual business acumen are put in charge. Given David Zaslav's shot across the bow, it seems that Disney's position as an industry leader may be waning. They don't seem to command the same level of respect as they used to, and not just with the fans. If theater chains agreed to putting Dune Messiah out on the same day as the Ray movie, it means that industry insiders don't respect Bob Iger and Disney anymore. And to that I say, good. Don't shoot! Let him burn! As for the Acolyte, We've only got two more episodes to tie up this mess of a story. Something tells me that the incompetent writers and Leslie Headland probably won't wrap this up neatly. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some story thread left open for a second season. I guess we'll just have to see how big of a storage closet Leslie Headland has for all of that Harvey Weinstein's bodies. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think the Acolyte killed Star Wars? Or was it already dead to begin with? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one! Okie dokie!